Dear audience, uh, cheers, colleagues, um, I'm very glad for this opportunity to present this study that I think will contribute to profound changes in public health policies. I think this is a start to something important because we are seeing that fathers smoking prior to conception, even if stopping years before uh, having a child, increases asthma in offspring. And that's a new concept. Um, this graph shows asthma uh, in generations born from 1945 to 2000. And it shows that this blue line shows the childhood onset asthma. And, and it shows for two generations, and for this whole time span, there is an increase. But the, it's a huge increase. And we really need to understand what's going on because we don't want this increase in all the societies in transition around the world that cannot afford inhaled steroids to treat the asthma. It's a, it will be a catastrophe. Um, we know that mother's environment plays a key role for child health. And this is currently guiding public health policies. So this remains extremely important. But the recent years, there have come studies that make us want to know or make us think it could be possible that father's environment before conception could make a difference to offspring health. There are studies on human sperm showing effects of smoking and occupational exposures at changing sperm. And there are studies from animal models that shows that such effects can be transmitted to the next generations. However, it's a problem that there are not human data. There are very few human studies showing this, um, and it's the time to do that. So we investigated whether father's environment prior to conception impact offspring asthma, and we looked at smoking and occupational well-being. We used the Rhine study, data from Northern Europe, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Estonia, where we have followed over 20,000 people over 20 years. Uh, and in this, and we've asked them about when they started smoking, when they stopped smoking, and lots of other questions throughout those 20 years. And in the recent survey, we also asked them about their offspring. And they gave information about 27,000 offspring, of which 9% had childhood asthma, and 6% had non-allergic childhood asthma. And the rest of my presentation will focus on the non-allergic asthma. 10% had fathers who smoked only before conception. They quit smoking before conception. Um, so it's, you need a large study to be able to investigate the detail, this detail. 18% had a father who had welded before conception. So there was quite some industrial activity in some of these centers. And these are our results. <coughs> Father smoking started in adolescence, before age 15. There was a three-timed increased risk of non-allergic asthma in his offspring. It's a huge effect. These were very robust results. Uh, and if father quit smoking five years prior to child's birth or more, we still see the same, almost the same strong effect. If father started smoking after the age of 15, he needed to smoke for a long duration, for at least 10 years before conception, before we saw an increase in risk, which was a 50% increased risk. Still not, you know, still quite an increase. And then we asked ourselves, what are the other important exposures in young men? Other important chemical exposures, for instance? And we thought occupation is where we need to look. And we looked at welders, and found a double risk if father had welded for 10 years or more before conception. These are highly significant results and very consistent. Uh, for mothers smoking only prior to conception, we saw no effect. And there could be weak effects that we couldn't see. But the, uh, we did see the well-known effects of mothers smoking around pregnancy, of course, with increased asthma and offspring if mother smoked about around pregnancy. That's not new. This model 
try to explain something about how this is possible. You, I, don't, I think you may not believe me. But what it shows is sperm cells, susceptibility window, potential vulnerability windows where father's <laughs> sperm cells could be harmed. And this you know, blue line here, it's the father's sperm cells in utero, when the father himself is in utero. And here we see his sperm cells when he's very young, before completion of puberty, and after puberty, when sperm cells are dividing and dividing uh, to multiply all the time, producing new sperm. Sorry. Uh, and we do see an effect of grandmother smoking. If she hit this primordial germ cell, we see changes with offspring asthma increased. If, but the largest hit is at this age, before completion of puberty. And there is actually a study showing a father smoked before age 11, his sons have higher fat mass. So, so there are reasons to believe that this is a very important vulnerability window. Young, young men, adolescent men. Then, if he smokes after this time, he needs to smoke quite a lot, but then we do see increased risk. There is a hit to this spermatogonia, and there is a hit by welding, this blue hit, also with an increased risk. The women's, the development of the oocytes is quite different. They're protected in a different way, so the difference between mothers and fathers makes sense. Conclusions. We see that environmental exposures in young men impact on respiratory health of their offspring born many years later. And we speculate that effects might be mediated via lasting influences during susceptible stages of spermatocyte development. And there is quite solid lab studies that uh, would confirm that our findings could biologically be plausible. I think those findings have profound implications for public health policies. The focus on mothers is not less important, that's still extremely important. But we need also to focus and protect on adolescents and young men, and protect them from harmful exposures, and that can uh, improve respiratory health of future generations. Thank you.